Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Take Back My Brain. Today, I have a fantastic treat for you again. I have Dr. Chris Molda, and he's a good friend and a colleague of mine. And Chris is an expert on fasting. So if you've heard me talk a lot, you know that I love fasting. I incorporate it into many different things. I run prayer and fasting retreats. So this is something I just love to sink my teeth into. And I love doing fasting with Chris. So thank you, Dr. Molda, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Lori. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me um, a little bit about who you are, where you practice, and then let's get into fasting. Sure. So I have been um, a chiropractor for almost 20 years, about 19 years. Uh, and I've been doing uh, functional nutrition, functional wellness, probably about seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to transform my practice only because I started to get a little frustrated with, with my practice. Not so much that chiropractic uh, isn't great and doesn't work. I still do chiropractic, but I was looking for more. I was looking not just to help my patients, but actually improve my health. And it kind of hit a wall with chiropractic. Um, it's a great tool, but it's not an everything tool. And so that's when I started to branch out into the functional stuff and in particular fasting. Um, which really helped to get to those um, hard to hard to reach conditions yeah. and start to transform my health, my family's health, and the health of my practice. And so I'm in Maine. I'm I'm in the north. I'm as far northeast as you can get. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, I've been to practice for almost 20 years now. That's fantastic. So, how did you get into fasting? Like, what drew you to incorporating that for yourself? You said you started it for your own health, and yeah. then your families, and then obviously we've incorporated it into your practice. So yeah. what, what fascinated you about it or drew you to it? Um, it's hard to remember at this point. I think probably what drew me to it was this idea that the body can heal itself if you give it a chance. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're in, when you're in the natural space, when you're in the alternative space, you have this understanding that the body wants to be healthy uh, you just have to you just have to either remove the source of the problem or you have to give it a chance. And uh, I am not a big uh, what I would call a pill pusher. I grew up in a family where uh, I had supplements given to me all the time and I hated it. And so that's still my initial. I don't want to take supplements. And so I think I was drawn because uh, it. It, it fed those two interests in me. Like it allowed the body to heal, but it also didn't require me to take something to do it. Sure. And um, that interest was enough for me to overcome this idea of not eating because I love eating too. I love food. Right. You know? Who doesn't love food and eating? I, it's pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, that's, I think, where I, where I started because I wasn't interested in not eating. I was, I was interested in doing something that was unique and different uh, and made a lot of sense to me. Right. And I'm um, fasting free. Right. So, right. and it's free, right. Anybody so can yeah, try somebody it. comes to you like, I can't afford to do your supplement program. I can't afford to do other things. You're like, right, well, you can't afford to fast. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't cost anything, but a lot of mindset in between the ears there. Yes. Yeah. And that's a lot. <laughs> it, it is a lot. Fasting is very mental for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you start incorporating fasting, well, let's define fasting first. Sure. So tell us what exactly fasting is. Um, I will say that over the past seven years, um, I started to talk about fasting a little differently. Okay. Uh, the way I talk about fasting now is, is you can't do it wrong. Um, but in general, fasting is not eating. Like it's not fat. You like you're not fasting from your phone. You're not fasting from uh, this activity or that activity. Fasting is always giving up food and just not eating. And mm -hmm. so whether that's not eating for a couple hours and you're fasting for three hours or you're fasting for two weeks, um, it's simply just not eating food. Okay, great. And so how do you start incorporating that when you're teaching fasting? Because obviously you're not going to put somebody on a three-day water fast. The first <laughs> right. time they come into your office, they may never, ever come back to you. Um, so what do you suggest somebody who's trying to start fasting? Like, where do they start? Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I think the first thing to understand is, is that we all fast for at least 12 hours a day. You're just asleep and you're not aware of it. Sure. So the hardest part about starting to fast is um, it's intentional. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this has happened to you and before you even started fast is that we've all been so busy that we forget to eat. And right. it's like, all of a sudden it's dinner time and you're like, oh my gosh, I skipped breakfast. I didn't eat my lunch and it's dinner time. And you find that you fasted all day long and it was easy. Um, that That's not what like, I'm working on, I'm working on that intentional part of it. Like I want you to be intentional. And the second that you make it intentional, you get hungry. <laughs> right. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till lunch. I know it never fails. So I think the easiest way to start with an intentional fast is fasting in between meals, which doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Like eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that's it. But when you choose to do it, um, you feel the resistance, right? You feel that resistance to fasting all of a sudden. And so that's, it doesn't matter how seasoned you are, how many, how long, how many fasts you make. If you just say, I'm not going to eat between this meal and this meal, um, it's difficult. And so I think, what is that? Like a three, four hour fast. I think that's a great way to start. Right. So there's just no snacking. Just no snacking. Yeah. That's it. And so why don't we want to snack? Uh, um, well, first of all, from a, uh, there's so many physiologic benefits to not fasting. There's so many emotional reasons to not fasting. I'll just speak to the emotion of it. If you tell yourself, I'm not going to eat for three to four hours, it's easier than saying, I'm not going to eat period, or I'm not going to eat X, Y, and Z. So I like, I mean, it's delayed gratification. So delayed gratification. <laughs> Del- Sorry, that was a message from you. These are all messages from you. Um <laughs> that were delayed. Speaking of delayed gratification. So delayed gratification is just a a, a great way to emotionally handle giving something up. You don't don't have that negative self-talk of, oh, I've got to give this up the rest of my life. It's more of, I'll just wait to take this. And it takes the edge off emotionally. But from a physiologic standpoint, um, uh, fasting in between meals, giving your gut a break, is the biggest thing I think. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. And let's talk a little bit about glucose. You know, what just not snacking does to glucose. Not snacking, uh, what it does to glucose, well, naturally it's going to make your glucose drop, right? Right. Because glucose gets stimulated by sugar, gets stimulated by stress, gets stimulated by, uh, can even be stimulated by toxins, obviously, that you're eating. So by not eating, you're going to naturally reduce um, your glucose levels. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is key because then that helps what your brain health, your adrenal health, sure. your hormones. So the, the more stable you can keep those glucose levels, the more stable everything is in your body. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, glucose uh, <clears throat> from a from a simplistic standpoint, it's it, it, a diabetic is somebody who has out of control insulin and glucose, and a diabetic in general, untreated, uh, loses twenty years of their life expectancy, which is really scary. That's very scary. And it's all tied to your glucose levels. So just simply snacking between meals and keeping your glucose at a reasonable level can essentially stop you from losing 20 years of your life. Right. Really yeah. easy step to start. Right. And that should be motivating right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Motivating for me. Yeah. Yeah. So you get people stopping their snacking. So yep. their, their glucose more stable. And then like step two would be what, what do you do? Because some, when somebody's mastered that they're ready for what I would consider more like a longer intermittent fast. Would you say that? Yeah, I would say a longer intermittent fast is the next step. And for me, the way I do it, if you kind of think about like an eating window, um, some people either think of it as, as an eating window or they think of it as a fasting window. I think of it as an eating, like when can I eat? So mm-hmm. if you think of like breakfast and then dinner and everything in between is when you're eating, you're just not eating all the time. Um, what I like to do is just shrink that on either end. Yeah. And so the next step for me is, is having people eat breakfast later and, or eat dinner earlier, mm-hmm. just to condense in a little bit. Uh, I'll give a good example. I'm not a coffee drinker, but my wife, Brittany is. And when we started this, uh, I mean, she wakes up and drinks her coffee like first thing in the morning, right? It's like, that's what so many people do. And so for her, the baby step that was doable for her was 15 minutes. Oh, I'm going to wake up. Yes. So it was like, I'm not going to wake up and go down and make the coffee. I'm going to wake up and do something else and then make the coffee, right? And so it turned into waiting 15 minutes, which eventually turned into waiting 30 minutes, which eventually 
waited, you know, turned into waiting an hour uh, and then two hours. Uh, and I'm always pushing people to, to wait two hours after you wake up to eat uh, just to give them a, a, an idea of a time frame. Mm -hmm. And then um, then from the other end, it was, you know, trying to eat before seven o'clock. And so trying to eat your dinner and be done with dinner by seven o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to make sure, you know, being done by seven, that way you're not digesting into your sleeping time. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So the later you eat, it's funny. There's a lot of reasons why eating late is so bad for you. But one of the things that I, I, I'll talk about is just as we age, our ability to break food down decreases the, the earlier in the day, right? So like you think of when you're in your 20s and you're in college and it's two o'clock in the morning and you're ordering Chinese food and pizza and you eat it at two o'clock in the morning and then you go to sleep and you have a great night's sleep because you're 18, 19, 20. Right. Uh, then you go to the other spectrum and you look at the early bird special at five o'clock in the afternoon and it's full of all <laughs> great herd people in the restaurant because they're all eating early. Right. Uh, and right. It, it's not just a, it's just not like it's not like a social dynamic. Just it's actually that our body struggles breaking food down as we get older later in the day. Mm hmm. Yeah. So when we just eat earlier, it takes stress off. It, it helps to balance our hormones. It, help, it helps our blood pressure. Uh, it, it helps you sleep better. All of these things are tied to just not eating late as we get older. Oh, absolutely. It helps with acid reflux at night. You know, so many yes. older people get acid reflux because, you know, your digestive enzymes decrease, those kind of things. And it does remedy that. Yeah. Um, so you're not having to take extra medication, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So what would be, um, when do you incorporate, say like an extended fast? When I say extended fast, I mean like three to five days. Like, do you start them on a 24 hour fast and then work mm. out or what do you do? I think um, from a simplistic standpoint, I think if you're able to go 24 hours without eating dinner to dinner, you know, um, so you're just eating dinner and that's all you're eating. You have, you have great energy. You're not hangry. You're not angry at people. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, and, and it's a good day for you. You're like, wow, that was a really good day. Then I think from a metabolic fitness standpoint, go for it. Go do that three, four, five day fast. Right. You're ready for it. Right. So you're talking about metabolic fitness. I love that word. So kind of expand on what that means. Metabolic fitness. So for me, metabolic fitness, when I say it, I, I'm referring to your body's ability to be a dynamic energy machine. You're not just tied to sugar, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're able to burn fat as fuel, whether you're eating fat or the fat that we all have in our bodies. Um, you're able to use autophagy, which is your body's ability to eat cancer cells and cellular debris and autoimmune cells and all these things, different negative scar tissue, uh, mm -hmm. all these different sources of fuel in your body. So when you're metabolically fit, you don't need energy from the food you're eating. You can actually use the stores of energy that you have in your body uh, very efficiently and very effectively to, to have a great day and have that abundant energy that you're looking for. Okay. So I'm going to play a little devil, devil's advocate here. So if I'm going to do, say, a 24-hour fat fast, um, isn't that going to stop my metabolism? Uh, you know, I haven't had that question in such a long time, Lori, but... <laughs> um, you know, I guess that's based on that whole old idea, right? Of you have to eat like seven to 10 meals a day to keep the fire stoked and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I used to teach <laughs> that until I realized like that messes people up. <laughs> we all taught that. I taught right? that too. We all, we all in, in, in the health field, we all had, we all, we all believed that myth, right? You know, that was the theory that we Even all. It didn't to. seem right. Right. It didn't seem right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, who wants to eat that many times a day, but we all end up doing it anyway. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I was I was just listening to a different podcast and the person I was listening to very articulately said what I felt for years. And that is, is that in the alternative health space, specifically in in the uh, gut health space, mm -hmm. there are some things that we know. And then there's a lot of theories. And because of how much we all want to help and because of how bad a lot of people's symptoms are, we, we very quickly kind of uh, grab onto these theories Mm -hmm. And you want to see, is this going to help? Is this going to make a difference? And I think eating multiple meals a day was that theory that we all kind of sure. latched on to because it made sense. But the reality is, is that um, from an anthropod anthropologic standpoint, from a historical standpoint, like the human body wasn't made to eat. <laughs> yeah. And that's where I, that's where I, you know, 
kind of stopped and took a step back and saying, you know, I was hearing some really good mentors in my life saying, what did we eat historically and how did we eat historically? And I'm not just talking like cavemen kind of thing, you know, the whole paleo movement, but like, like, let's go back biblically. Let's go back, you know, ancient Egyptian. Let's go back to those times. And like, what did they actually do and what worked and what didn't work, you know, from paleontology research and all that kind of stuff. And you're, you're right. You know, we, nobody ate eight times a day. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nobody did it. And people ate seasonally and they had periods of fasting. So how often, you know, when you're out in the field working or you're off hunting or, you know, just normal life circumstances, most of the time they only ate two meals a day. It wasn't, right. you know, until more modern times, you know, post-World War II that we started eating more. And just because we just had more convenient foods, I think. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the, the industrial revolution, the revolution? Industrial, yeah, revelation, right? Revolution changed a lot of things, including like the the food industry. So yeah. we just have access to things that we never had access to before, in seasons that we never would have had it, uh, access to before, right? Right. And uh, and and so you see a lot of like modern day conditions, modern day diseases, mostly chronic conditions, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of all of these um, uh, enhancements industrially. And so when you just get past that convenience and look a little bit past that in history and you see how, how people did eat, it really does mesh really well with this idea that um, our body longs to go without. Our body longs for these feast and famine cycles. And we were made to excel in that. And um, I would say that the majority of chronic conditions that are associated with eating are associated more with overeating than undereating at this point oh, in history. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think a lot of that has to do with just processed foods in general. So, you know, those techno foods um, that we've created in science that just wreak havoc on everything. Yeah. yeah. Cause when you, when they, they all raise your glucose, right? So they're all raising your glucose. I mean, who, who want, who needs a Twinkie in their body? I don't know. Are Twinkies a thing anymore? I haven't even seen one forever. <laughs> well, they probably were made 20 years ago and they're still around at this point. So still around at this point, yeah, because they never mold, kind of like McDonald's, it never molds. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Cause, cause, yeah, because real food molds. And if it's not molding, then it must not and there, be. Then there's an issue. Then there's yes. an issue. For sure. <laughs> sure. So is there anything we really want to do? Like when I teach you know, people to get into fasting, a lot of times we'll do like a ketogenic kind of like jump start to help them to fast better. Is there anything in particular that you like to do that would be outside of say preparing them of the ketogenic? Well, I mean, to, yeah, to be honest with you in general, I actually don't even like to prepare people anymore. I just want to see what happens because when you jump into a fast, you see what happens and, and, it, and it's better than any test anybody can ever do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's better than any blood work or or a finkel sample or any kind of test. It's like, just go see how you respond to it. Uh, and then um, then you can just very easily uh, make changes based on how you respond. Uh, because sometimes you can power through it. Right, yeah, oh, definitely for sure. So tell me some weird things that have happened to you personally during a fast, anything that you're like weird pains or oh. <laughs> I don't know, something fell off, you know, cause people tell you like, oh, my mole fell off or, I mean, I had one time where the end of my finger literally turned white, like stark white, like the end of my finger. And it was cold, white and cold for, I don't know how many hours. And um, then it went away. Mm. <laughs> I've know, seen that other things like that. Yeah, I actually, I've seen that too in other people. That's never happened to me, but I've seen that in particular mm -hmm. thing. Um, I mean, the nice thing about all this stuff is, is that it, it all just goes away again. You know, like it's not, it's not, it's not the new you, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, the biggest thing that happened in, in that sense was I was in the middle of a five day water fast and um, I got this pain in my shoulder and it affected me emotionally. Like I had a huge emotional reaction to it. Like it really was freaking me out because mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint it. I was like, it was really deep and it was really weird. And it like, and I didn't, and it was bringing all this stuff up and I didn't understand it. And so like two days later, after talking to my wife about this is really weird, blah, 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 blah. 
she goes, isn't that the shoulder you had surgery on? Ah. Uh, Oh yeah, it was the shoulder. And the pain I was feeling was the pain that I was feeling when I injured it. Like it felt Ooh, yeah. like when I injured it, right? And so yeah. emotionally it was bringing me back there. And then like a day later it went away. Um, but as you know, when you fast, your body has the time, energy and ability to go and heal these old wounds, right? Right. Um, Cause it's not digesting so people, What was that? Cause it's not digesting food. That's right. When you're not spending all that energy digesting food, your body uses this extra energy to do other stuff, right? Right. Um, and so, it, you know, some people call it retracing where your body kind of goes back to that old injury and heals the right way, not the wrong way. But that was just all the scar tissue getting eaten up and, and the tissues healing, right? And I could tell you like probably for almost a year after that, I mean, I, I had great range of motion. I was pain-free. Um, if I wasn't stupid and doing other things and, and injured it from doing something stupid, it probably would have stayed that way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but life happens. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. The first time that I did a fast, um, I, I jumped into it. I had no prep. I had no nothing. I just, I meddled with intermittent fasting a little bit. Yeah. I really felt the Lord told me do a, do a five day fast. And I was really nervous about fasting because, um, I was told that it would trigger an eating disorder. Cause I had mm. you know, overcome eating disorders are like never, ever, ever, ever fast. But I'm like, I really feel like I need to fast. And I really felt, you know, impressed upon my spirit to do that. So I jumped into this five day fast and I felt like something hit me. <laughs> like just because I was like achy and everything hurt oh, yeah. and, and uh, my hips and my ankles hurt so bad and like, it was hard to sleep. And I found out later that that's a hormone shift going on and especially in a woman's body, you know, when you have your ankles. And hips. Yeah. And the crazy thing about it is I had really tough periods before that. And then after I did that five day fast, I'm other than a twinge in the last six years, I have never had cramps again, never. Oh. And there was some other hormone reset things that happened. So it was amazing. It was worth all of the, like, I feel like I've got the flu kind of thing. Um, you know, everything that happened. So I, I like your idea of just like jumping into it and not yeah. you know, get into ketosis or whatever. Cause you know, that takes a lot of people. And I think sometimes it might deter them from actually fasting. Yeah. I mean, I had, um, I had a friend of mine who was struggling with fertility issues and she knew that me and my wife were, had, had struggled with fertility issues. Um, and, you know, we, we were able to get past my wife's fertility issues and get pregnant again. Um, and so my friend had been struggling for like five years and been doing all this stuff. And she'd heard about fasting and what we did. And so I started to work with her and she was struggling, Lori. I mean, she was struggling with carb cravings. She was struggling with weight loss. I mean, um, she was having a hard time just even fasting in between meals. Um, mm -hmm. And we were doing a lot of ketosis and trying to get her into ketosis. And she just struggles for like a month, for like maybe not a month, maybe like three weeks. And then she 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 says, you know, I read somewhere that um, if you fast, your cravings will go away. So I think I want to do a five day fast. And I don't know about you, but when somebody just comes to you and says, I want to do a five day fast, you don't say no. You say no, yes. You say, okay, great. Let's go. Great. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody more miserable doing a five day one bedridden, like calling me seven times a day, oh. <laughs> um, like, like struggling so hard. I mean, had, a, had, had a young kid, had a husband, her husband's like, you need to stop. You can't get out of bed. You got to do your life, like tr talking her out of doing this five day fast. Um, and so I was encouraging her and telling her what to look for and letting, you know, a, a lot of the things she was experiencing was just this drastic healing that you experienced, oh, right? Absolutely. Nothing. Yeah, nothing that told me she should stop. So she wasn't exhibiting any of those symptoms. I was like, nope, keep going. You can do it. Giving her about a bunch of tips and tricks on how to feel better and things like that. Mm -hmm. And she did the five-day water fast. And she came out of it and um, she was doing really well, but pregnant like 30 days later. Really? Like, yeah. Like try, trying for five years. And the thing that I love most about fasting is fasting for, mo for most people can be that thing that you say I was this way and then I did a fast okay. yeah and now and now everything's different and like we all want those seismic shifts in our life and mm -hmm. fasting for so many people can be that 
from a physical standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, like it, it, it takes everything about the person mm -hmm. that uh, I love it. I love it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same way. So yeah. Yeah. It's so good. So fasting can be super challenging. Like we were just talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you get that? How do you develop that mental six pack to be able mm -hmm. to do a five day fast? Because, you know, you push through it, you push through it, your, you know, clients push through it, patients push through it. And somebody who's thinking about it, but they're like, I don't, I can't do it. Like, how do you push mm -hmm. through mental six pack? Um, I think a lot of it is that mindset, like we were talking about, um, for a lot of people, it's, it, it's this idea of giving something up. And so this, I, so realizing that it's delayed gratification, not giving anything up can help. Right. Right. Um, Sometimes you can't put the cart in front of the horse. Sometimes you just have to experience it and see how you respond, which is why baby steps of fasting in between the meals and then shrinking slowly. I did that. I'll tell you right now. I did that. I, I, <laughs> when I started fasting, man, I was eating like seven, eight meals a day. I was eating carbs all day long. Um, mm -hmm. And I would get super spacey and dizzy like 30 minutes after not eating breakfast, right? Like normally I would eat breakfast, we'll say around 8.30. By nine, I was like at work and I was like having a hard time focusing and, <laughs> you know, yeah. and just like, this, this is going to go away, right? And it does, it all goes away. Um, but just constantly pushing yourself in the same way of you working out. Yeah. Because um, it's like knowing yeah. It is a muscle. It is. It is a muscle. It's having this the same mindset of an athlete and just knowing that the 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 hurt is temporary and your your muscles are going to get stronger and, and the next time you do it, it's it's going to be easier. Yeah. Yeah. So I just lost my train of thought. Now okay. I need to fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this though, and I will say this for you, and I don't I don't say this for I don't say this to all my patients, but if I do know that they're I, if, if I know they're Christian or if I know they're Jewish, I have a bunch of Jewish patients. If I know um, is religious or has a relationship with God, I will tell them that one of the best things they can do emotionally while they're fasting is be intentional with their prayer life okay. because it is so difficult. And I've had, mm -hmm. I, I've had so many people just hear the doubt and, and, and hear the negativity about fasting mm -hmm. Uh that um, having a plan of meditation or prayer, uh, especially the times when you would normally eat, that's when you do it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it actually just catapults you into the next, you know, into the next stage of what you're going for. Because, because I hate running. And one of the reasons why I hate running is because while I'm running, I have the worst self-talk in the world. Worst. Like, <laughs> I'm going to die. Why are you doing this? This isn't fun. <laughs> this is awful. Just walk. You can walk. You don't need to do like, that's how I talk to myself when I run. So I started to run um, when me and Britt were first married uh, and just to get past the self-talk, not for any other reason, but just to practice, you know, uh -huh. getting past that. Positive. And fasting is a lot like that. Fasting is a lot like that. Right. Right. Cause you're just constantly telling yourself, Nope, you can do this. You know, hunger's a wave. It's going to go away. Um, that pain is good. That means something's healing, you know, cause we're taught in our society, pain is bad. Pain is always right. bad. And it's not, sometimes pain is healing. Right. Um, yeah. and so when you combine that, like you were saying with prayer and that's what we do a lot in the prayer and fasting retreats is that's all you're doing is praying and fasting. Right. <laughs> and so then you're going to hear from the Lord. So I love to set an intention. If I'm doing an extended fast, especially, you know, three to five days to set an intention for that fast. Like, why am I fasting? And it may be one thing, it may be, you know, five different things, but, and then you just constantly bring those, those intentions in prayer, you know, yep. at the times when you would normally eat and you get yep. a lot of answers when you're not distracted by food. <laughs> yeah. It's very fruitful. And, um, you become very aware of how much, how you use or misuse food, I guess I should say. Yeah. Like for me, the thing that I noticed um, just because I'm relatively retrospective or introspective, I should say, when I'm fasting, um, because I'm curious about the changes that are happening physiologically, but on an emotional standpoint, I'll get hungry. And it's funny, the more I fast, the more I realize I get hungry when I get stressed out. So instead of what I've, what I've come to understand is, is when I get hungry, I shouldn't ask myself, 
what do I want to eat? I, I ask myself, what am I stressing about right now? And, right. and it, it was a huge shift for me uh, in terms of my own peace and happiness, right? Yeah, it creates a lot of self-awareness. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. there's so many things about fasting. And I mean, and we, we haven't touched on everything either, but there's so many wonderful things about fasting, which is why I do a prayer and fasting retreat now, or yeah. why you do one. It, it just, it helps you become more you in so many ways. And then the health part, the health part is the health part. It really is. Yeah, I, so... I, always tell, I always tell people like, I can't give you a protocol to do what fasting does. Right, no, no. I mean, we can, we can do it a major protocol and we do lots of different protocols, but I still can't do what fasting can do in your body because right. your body was designed to heal if you remove the interference we'll say food's an interference <laughs> right and then and then then you just allow it to do what it's designed to do is to eat up the stuff that's not there and yeah. to heal yeah. reduce inflammation and it's it's a beautiful thing so as a woman and you as a man the, we mm -hmm. are different and so how would you say fasting affects us differently because that's oh my god thing. I, I hear other people say women should never ever fast and i'm like oh my gosh it reset my my hormones i would never ever stop fasting but i i'm pretty strategic in how i fast so how do you teach the differences uh well i prefer to teach men because it's easy and simple right? and <laughs> just go fast <laughs> just go fast it's fine go fast with women um, I've learned the hard way, not because of me, but because of my female patients, I've learned how much I've, you know, they've struggled, uh, with it. And that's just because your hormones, women's hormones are different than men's hormones, as you said. And so, uh, it does, it does, um, matter to pay attention to your cycle, obviously, while you're a woman, because there's certain times in your cycle where your body's going to be more open to fasting and where it's going to be more challenging to right. fasting. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, for, I would say for experienced, uh, fasters who are women, we start to talk about it, but I do not talk about it right away. Yeah. It's confusing then. It's confusing. And again, you can't fast wrong. Right. And so this only comes into play. This hormone shift really only comes into play for me when we're doing more than a, a day. Like once you, if you're doing more than a day or two, uh, I won't even talk about when an ideal time to do fasting is, but uh, you know this too. It's like, as you get into those extended fasting, um, then you really want to ask mm -hmm. those questions about, you know, where am I in my cycle and stuff like that, or just jump right in like you did. It's like, if you're, if you're, if you feel like your hormones are wrecked, if you feel like your stomach's wrecked and you're like, I just need a huge, I just need a seismic shift in my life. Yeah. Go you're not going to screw yourself up. So it's fine. No, yeah. you're not going to screw yourself up. No. No, it's so hard to, to fast wrong. And, and, you know, it, it's funny. It's like you tell people, and I'm sure you said this too. Like somebody says, how do I know when I should stop fasting? When is it becoming like bad for me? Uh, it's, it's when it's easy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. like if you, if you fast and you're struggling, you're struggling, and then it becomes easy. That's the equivalent to going and working out and not breaking the sweat. Right. Like, what's the point? <laughs> You're not doing anything, right? So your body struggles. Like once you struggle with fasting and then all of a sudden it switches and you're like, oh, this is super easy. You can stay there. It's totally fine to stay there. There's nothing wrong with it. But that's a, probably a good time to break your fast because it's not a struggle anymore in your body. Yeah, stop on a good note. Stop on a good note. You're not you're not getting as much. You, you, there's a chance you're not getting as much benefit from it. This is based on how you feel. I'm not testing your glucose yeah. or ketones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you hurt and then you feel good, your body might want food at that point, your body might need to, to, to do other things to get benefits. So, yeah. Yeah. So do you just recommend water fasting or do you do say broth fasting, fat fasting, maybe speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Um, again, I don't think any way of fasting is wrong. I prefer a water fast because it's so easy, yeah. uh, because you do, well, let me, let me qualify it this way. I like doing a water fast because I have a lot of gut issues. And so why I like a water fast is because it, it's, it's adding that layer of rest in your gut. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get so much benefit from doing that. That being said, your gut gets benefit from doing bone broth, mm -hmm. right? You know, I know bone broth after even one day, <laughs> it's very difficult so I don't know if I would ever recommend doing like a five day bone broth fast every day because you're going to be choking it down after a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of view it more like my baseline is doing a water fast. And then if you want to add in bone broth 
at some point, feel free. Mm -hmm. If you want to add in some healthy fats um, to keep you going, go ahead. Right. Um, if if you like coffee or tea, um, in an ideal world, we've already figured out if it's going to break your fast or not. But um, I have some people who do great fasts, and uh, if they don't drink coffee, they don't fast. <laughs> so I'm like, then drink coffee when you okay, fast. Drink coffee. Yeah. yeah. Because you're um, still getting so much benefit from it. Yeah. So much benefit. Yeah. I mean, it's not a perfect water fast, but um, perfect is what is perfect's the perfect is the enemy of progress. It, like it can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't mind any of those things. Um, it's at, at the end of the day, it's really about just keeping your glucose low. And um, there's a whole bunch of imperfect ways to do it. And, and I love them all. Uh, I even like the elemental heal part. You know, I mean, for some people just mm -hmm. doing an elemental heal yeah. um, is a great way to just keep a fast going. If mm -hmm. that's like your one meal a day, you know, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. for people with people with, um, what is it? IBS. Hey, I'm doing my elemental oh, deal. Oh, no, what's, your, what's your flavor? It's peach. Peach. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was doing chocolate today. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Actually, it's still good. Like, you know, sometimes chocolate can be too much after a while. It's still mm -hmm. in that. It's still like, it's still, still a good sitting. Yeah. 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 I haven't had to change the flavor yet. Perfect. Um, but yeah, like those kind of things, those are all great um, to try. And, and, like you literally try them. Like there's no, yeah. Like do, a water fast isn't better than any of these. Um, it's good to try them all. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I just get bored when I'm fasting. I'm like, eh, I think I'll do some broth, you know? Yeah. 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 I just kind of go with what, what my body, cause I've been doing it long enough. Just kind of go with what my body's feeling at the moment and go from there. So yeah. what would be like your parting words for, you know, all the listeners today on fasting? Um, what would you just like? Just, just do it. <laughs> just honestly, just go do it. it, it you're not going to, nobody's died from fasting, right? Right. You know, no, nobody's died from fasting. No perfect way or imperfect way. I'm sure you get this question too with your patients. It's like, yeah, but I'm on all these medications. I'm on all these supplements. Can I take my supplements? Can I take my medications? Um, and I'm sure you you have experienced it both ways, like I have, right? So mm -hmm. some people stop their medication while they're fasting. I do not recommend it. I cannot recommend people to stop their medication. They do it on their own, um, and they're usually fine. I see people who don't, and they take their supplements and they take their medication while they're fasting, and they're usually fine. Um, it's so hard to fast wrong. Just go right? do it. Yeah, yeah, because you're always going to get benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's just take the next step, whatever it is. Whatever. When, when you're when you're talking intuitively like you, like you just mm -hmm. did, uh, or even from a practitioner and me trying to help somebody, it's always just, what's the next step that they're supposed to be taking? And let's figure out what that is and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and most people kind of know what it is. They just they don't do want to do it. Have to help them like figure that out. And just say, <laughs> right. yes, that's the next step. Yes, that's the next step. We all know. We're all like, oh, I hope it's not this. Just stop snacking. Different. Just stop snacking. Oh, stop snacking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard, very hard. It and is. I find, so here's what I like about fasting too, because we were talking about dietary shifts and the ketogenic diet, just real quick. I think fasting is easier than making a good decision. So wow. that's a I, statement. That's like loaded. Well, it's like, okay, I'm in a, I'm, I'm, I'm in a situation where I haven't been able to make my meal. I haven't been able to choose anything. I'm out with people and there's not a lot of good choices for me. It's so much easier for me to say, you know what, I'm not eating right now than for me to have the brain capacity. This is what I mean. It's like I've come to realize my decision making when I'm hungry isn't great. So it's easier for me to just get some water, maybe put a little salt in it for my hunger. Um, and 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 I get through that and I'm fine. But right. if there's something I really emotionally want, it's hard for me to not choose it if I if if I'm at the point where I'm like, oh, I'm trying to eat healthy. Right. It's, it's easier for me to say I'm not eating. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And people are less offended by that than if you're like sort of eating and then you don't eat what they made or, you know, right. Yeah. You're right. like, oh, I'm fasting today. Sorry. Yeah. And yeah. fasting's so in right now that if you say I'm fasting and you don't say it in like a I'm fasting way, you just right. say, oh no, I'm fasting. Thank you. People know. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They pretty much leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. 
this is a great talk. So we'll have to talk again about maybe some more in-depth fasting things in, a, in another episode. But I so appreciate you sharing yeah, I appreciate your you wisdom, too. your insights, and everything about fasting. Because you, as you know, this is one of my favorite topics. And for all of you listening, uh, Dr. Chris and I did create a fasting class. And we'll put that down in the show notes for you. So if you want to go through it, it's a seven-week course teaching you how to do a five-day fast. So, yeah. and it's a lot of fun. And uh, anyway, but that'll be in the show notes for you. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Chris, for being here. And I will see you in the next episode.